Greetings, and welcome again as we journey together through this Holy Week, preparing ourselves for the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In our last video, we talked about how we were going to go through some chapters in John after he met with his disciples, washed their feet, ate with them, and before he was arrested and went on trial. It is during that time where he gave his last instructions to the disciples. And it is during that time where we look to understand what our mission in this world is going to be, what Jesus is calling us to do. For as he called the disciples, he also calls on us. And so, just a refresher, last time, John 14, what we learned was Jesus reasserts his relationship with the divine and says he is going back to the Father. But he gives the disciple the final commandment to love. And he shares with them that the Holy Spirit is coming into the world and will guide them and guide us. Telling them that they will not be alone. And then finally he bestows upon them his peace. His peace he leaves with them and he, his peace he gives to them. And reassures them once again that if he goes away, he does so for them. And so that he can come back again for the world. And so today we turn to chapter 15. As always, we're not going to go through every verse in chapter 15. So if you would like to pause the video here to read chapter 15 and then join us again after you have read it, so that we can go through it and discuss it together. We begin chapter 15 at the beginning, of course, with, chapter, with verses 1 through 4. And this is one that we have heard time and time again. One that we might have even spoken of time and time again. I am the true vine. And my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Through those verses, we understand that Jesus is the source of our community. That as we grow upon the vine that is Christ, we are a part of Christ and the community. It is God who comes and who helps us out, who understands that there are going to be times when we don't live the way we're supposed to live. But God will prune that away so that we can be our true selves, be the Just selves that we are called to be, so that we can bear good fruit, so we can do good in deeds in this world Neither can you through Christ with the help of God. It is through Christ that we come together. It is through Christ that we are united. Those who one love, me and I one body, in them bear much one fruit. world. Because apart All in the image of God, coming together to do Whoever the good deeds that God wants us to do. To bear the good fruit that God is helping us to bear. This is what we are doing in this world. We know last time that Jesus told us that the one command is to love one another as we have been loved. And this continues to show how God and Jesus are going to help us to live those lives, to follow that command, to show the world that we love God because we love them. And that is what we are being asked to do. And so we move on to verse 9, where we hear these words. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. And we reiterate what we have just said. As the Father loves Jesus so that Jesus can love us. And when we love, we abide in God and Christ. We abide in each other. It is a symbiotic relationship. We are all together in this, on the vine, connected to one another. So that we can love one another. We can help one another grow. 
This is what we are being called to do so that God's joy, Christ's joy, can be in us so that our lives can be complete. For when we love one another and we feel the joy that comes from loving one another, then our lives are complete. Then we have joy. That is what we are called to do. And we move on to verses 12 through 14. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Once again, Jesus tells us the commandment to love one another as we have been loved. And then Jesus goes a little further. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. And then Jesus adds, You are my friends. No more is this relationship of master and servant. No more is this a relationship of teacher and student. This is now a relationship of friends, of peers, of one-on-one, -on -one, because now they know what they are supposed to do. The disciples are being told now what they are supposed to do. And when they know the plan, they know what God is asking of Jesus and what Jesus is asking of them, and therefore now God is asking of them, they are equal. And they can go out into this world to continue to do as Christ has done. And then the foreshadowing of... There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And Jesus says right there, You are my friends. I am about to lay down my life for you. For you, I give my life. So that you can continue to love in this world. So that you can continue what I started. For now we are in this together. This is not you following me. This is you understanding Jesus and doing what Jesus was doing. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. And this is where the lessons turn a little dark. For this is where Jesus warns the disciples and us that it's not going to be an easy journey. That the world at times is going to hate us because we are trying to do something that they might not want to be doing. Because we are trying to live a life of love, a life of selflessness, a life that doesn't only concern ourselves with us, but concerns ourselves with everyone. And so we understand that the world is going to hate us because the world hated Jesus and we follow Jesus. And so we hear these words from chapter 15, verse 18, and then verses 21 through 24. If the world hates you, be aware that it hated me before it hated you. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have sinned. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not have sinned. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. The world is going to hate us because the world hated Jesus. And we are now friends, peers, continuing what Jesus was doing in the world. So the world is now at times going to hate what we have to do. And the reason is because when Jesus was here, Jesus pointed out what they were doing wrong. Because if it wasn't for Jesus, there would be no sin. If it wasn't for Jesus pointing out the wrong that they were doing, they would never know. If it wasn't for Jesus for doing the things that they should have been doing, for living the love that God has in this world, no one would know. But because Jesus went into the world and showed the world what they were doing wrong, showed the world their sin, now they're angry. Now they hate Jesus. And as we are called to go out and do the same thing, to do these deeds of love for one another, to speak of love for one another, there are going to be some in the world who hate us. But we know we are not alone. 
we know that God is with us. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. God is sending the Advocate to testify for Jesus Christ, to say that Jesus did nothing wrong, to say this is how we are all supposed to live. But it's not just the Advocate that needs to do this. We need to do this. This is what we are called to do, to go out into the world, no matter how scary it is, no matter how much we want to stay huddled in our own little home, but to go out, to see the world, to be a part of the world, and to show the world what it is that they might be doing wrong. To show the world that the love of God lives and that they need to understand that we are here to live the love of God. It's not always going to be easy, but this is what we are called to do. This is the commandment that we are ordered to follow. This is our mission. This is our ministry in the world, to love one another as we have been loved. Please join me in prayer. Compassion in God, May your love grow in us and be shown in our good deeds for all creation. As we learn more about our relationship to you through Christ, give us the strength to go outside into the world, to bear the goodness that you have given to us. May we be the positive and loving force that all creation needs. In the name of the one who strengthens our relationship and shows us how to live our lives, Amen. Thank you again for joining us. We'll come back again tomorrow at about the same time, around 5.30, where we will talk about chapter 16. But I leave you again as I left you last time, paraphrasing the words of Jesus Christ. Do as the Father has commanded us, to love one another, so that the world will know we love God. And God loves the world. Rise, let us be on our journey.